Hi, today we're going to be looking at refinement of X-ray crystallographic models. We'll firstly be looking at the purpose of refinement, and then we'll move on to some specific methods of refinement. So where in the general process of X-ray crystallography does refinement come in? Refinement comes after we've made our initial model, and when we need to improve it. The process of improving the model involves calculating model structure factors, correcting for bulk solvent and other scaling, and modifying the parameters of the model. If the final model does not meet specifications, such as enzymatic activity, then we may need to go back and recalculate the structure factors. In some cases, we may need to go all the way back and rebuild our model. One important factor when building and refining a model is the R factor. The R factor is simply a measure of structure quality. It quantifies the agreement between the amplitudes of the structure factors calculated from a crystallographic model and those from the original X-ray diffraction data. There are a variety of R factors which may be determined to measure analogous residuals during least squares optimization procedures. R factor values can range from 0 to 0 0.6, where 0 would be a perfect match between calculated and observed intensities, and 0 0.6 would be for a set of measured intensities compared against a set of random intensities. Models with an R factor above 0.5 will generally not respond to attempts and improvements, but 0.4 or below and the model can usually be improved by refinement. A desirable target R factor for a protein model refined with data to 2.5 angstroms is considered to be 0.2. However, the R factor must always be treated with caution as an indicator of precision and not accuracy. Partially incorrect structures have been reported with R values below 0.1, whereas many imprecise but essentially correct structures have been reported with higher R values. Therefore, the R factor is by no means the only way of measuring model accuracy, and there are many other ways of quantifying this. Problems can arise after a round of refinement if the model produced has large regions of electron density that are unaccounted for, or if it does not conform to known chemical properties. A new refined model which contains errors can also be produced by attempting to fit the proposed structure model to experimental data that is false. Another source of error that can be introduced into models results from the variable occupancy of different atoms measured from the crystal. This arises if regions of the protein exist in different conformations, but refinement can account for it so long as a region of molecules exists in several distinct conformations. An important limiting factor in the ability of refinement to produce the correct structure is the resolution of the generated electron density, which is almost always insufficient to generate a good fit for every region of a protein. To remedy this, the relatively scarce experimental data is augmented by chemical information, for instance concerning bond lengths, planarity and angles. A specific example would be that peptide bonds should always be planar. Some problem areas of the structure cannot be solved by refinement, however, so crystallographers must solve these manually. Therefore, stages of rebuilding must be interspersed between courses of refinement. However, real issues arise at lower resolutions, where the electron density is not informative enough to keep the molecule geometry sensible for large regions. Therefore, more factors to be considered must be introduced into the model in order to narrow down the possibilities. These include the use of reference models, secondary structure restraints, Ramachandran restraints, and non-crystallographic symmetry restraints. The use of these is only sensible in low resolution refinement, as it limits the potential methods to validate pr proposed structures later. We are now going to look at a few examples of refinement methods. Simulated annealing, where the structure is heated to add randomness and then is slowly cooled. This allows particles to move to their lowest energy state maximum likelihood, where the parameters of the model, such as its rotation, 
are refined in order to best explain the observed data, and the phases are adjusted to minimize the R factor. Non-crystallographic symmetry restraints, where atoms are restrained in their average positions by means of an effective energy term, analogous to the covalent bond energy. Density modification. If the quality of the electron density map is not sufficient, then density modification is needed. This is done by applying physically meaningful restraints in real space. TLS refinement. TLS parameters describe the possible mean square displacements of groups of atoms in your protein model. These displacements can be translation, liberation, or screw motion. These are all programs available on software for X-ray crystallography, but it must be remembered that overfitting the data will lead to a low R factor, but also low accuracy. We do hope this video was useful. Cheers.